such as fractal. Hi, uh, just one second. Huh? Yes. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the live uh, telecast. I am here with. Uh, I'm here with Dr. Vishnu here, and Dr. Vishnu is a MBBS, and he has worked on a lot of um, community issues like bleed, safe bleed and all. And he's also national winner in some of the categories of his researches. Vishnu, uh, I welcome you to this SDRO's uh, live program for our students who are in Stony. You know, these days we face. It's a, a pleasure to be here, sir. Thank you. These days we feel, uh, face a lot of issues with our thinking. So today if we are teaching students in a particular domain or something like coding or artificial intelligence, we all as a parent know that it's not going to help them after 10 or 15 years. Because after 15 years there will be a lot of uh, variations and changes in uh, technology. So. Uh, I really emphasize on the point how we can train students on thinking skills. So if we can make them, you know, teach them how to think scientifically, it will definitely help them to cope up with new technologies in future. So I have requested you to talk to the students here today and uh, let's see if they can get benefited out of it. Thank you, sir. I, I consider this a very valuable opportunity uh, to reach out to so many people. And um, thank you, SDRO and uh, Salvesh, sir, for you personally for providing, providing providing me with such an opportunity. Yes, Vishnu. Let's let's start the session. I hope uh, most of us have joined. Uh, yes, yes, we are live now, so we can go ahead. All right, sir. So, um, hi everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Vishnu Bharadwaj, and I'll be talking to you. Uh, I want you to take a journey with me to a place where ideas are born. So we're going to be looking at three main domains. Uh, and first thing is something what we call as cognition. Second is intelligence. And third is perception. And uh, I want you to take a journey with me and explore with me where, what is the place where the ideas are born? So can we have the next slide, please? Yeah. So we'll be considering our, our uh, presentation. We'll be continuing in these areas. We'll be trying to understand what is cognition, what is intelligence and IQ. And we'll be comparing IQ of some of the popular people in the world and uh, try to analyze a couple of uh, reasoning behind the IQ and how this concept of IQ has come and how it can impact the lives of scientists. And uh, I also want you to Get, take a journey with me into the perceptions beyond intelligence and beyond cognition, which okay. where, the place where I believe the ideas are born. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Sir? So Science Direct defines cognition as a process, uh, as the mental process involved in acquiring information, acquiring and processing information that are necessary for everyday living. Next, please. Next slide, please, sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, just one sec. So second, um, second area of focus is intelligence. So we use the term intelligence as a measure of one's ability. And uh, let me tell you, the ability of intelligence is quite limited. Let's first take a look at the definition given by neuroscientists. Human intelligence, a mental quality that consists of abilities to learn from experience, adapt to new situations, understand and handle abstract concepts and use the knowledge to manipulate one's environment 
It sounds complex, so let me put it to you in a very, very simple terms. It's an ability to adapt to your surrounding environment. So this is quite relative phenomena. And uh, I want you to understand what is intelligent, intelligence quotient. So IQ, popularly what we call this as IQ. So it is a set of standardized tests developed to measure a person's cognitive ability in relation to their age group. So this is a very, very, very relative phenomena and relative test. And IQ does not measure intelligence like how a ruler measures height or a weighing scale measures weight, but rather than like how a race measures speed. So it is a very, very relative phenomena. As our academic system, we are very focused upon intel intelligence quotient of a person. Intelligence quotient of a person. And we do not understand that it's a very, very relative scale. And um, there's something called the average uh, score of an IQ of a person on a Bell's curve shows 100. And if we take a look at most of our current generation of students and uh, most of the people being educated in schools, the IQ is more than uh, somewhere around 120 to 130 um, IQ score. And our arithmetic test examination pattern, everything is totally based upon IQ. So if you want to get into an IIT, if you have, if you have a considerably good IQ, somewhere around 130, 140, you could easily be making it into IIT. But is that all what we want? It is getting, an, getting into an IIT or getting into an MIT is the dream of life? No, I believe that is where your journey begins. And what happens after you get, to get into such institute? Yes, you have an IQ, you do your effort, and you finally get into a, a college of your dreams, um, AIMS and medicals or IITs and engineering. And what happens then? you would probably be taking a corporate job or working in a corporate hospital and doing a routine of life. Yes, this is important, but is there something more we can expect from a person? Let's examine that point in the further slides. Next slide, please, sir. I have a question, Vishnu. Uh, do you yes, think sir? the students who crack IIT or uh, any higher institution, they have better IQ, IQ than the students who are not able to crack? So to, so to understand IQ, sir, we have a, we have a very broad scale here. So uh, again, we have different kinds of examinations as well. If we take a look at the current um, entrance pattern, we have something uh, JE mains and JE advanced, I guess, if I'm not wrong. So uh, this exam is designed in such a way. If you have a different level of uh, thinking, if you have an optimized level of thinking, what I would use the term ideally is optimized. Right. You take a massive physical process, a massive mechanical process and compress it into the lowest steps possible. Okay. And you put that in an examination, you're going to be cracking the exam. So you yes. have to answer about 180 questions, if I'm not wrong about the pattern of exam in a span of yes. 180 minutes. So yes. you, you have one minute for each question to use, a com use your comprehend and uh, complex knowledge of physics, chemistry, mathematics mm -hmm. in a very, very short manner. So okay. this is a very classical function of IQ. Mm -hmm. I so cannot can exactly say, say IQ is, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we can say that IQ is not very important to crack this exam, but it's one of the primary criteria where we should. Yes, look on or where we should so go. we have a, a concept called supports of cognition, uh, okay. where we'll be talking about factors like uh, perseverance, determination, dedication, which okay. fuel your cognitive process. So mm -hmm. you can definitely increase your IQ if okay. you're working upon certain scales because this is a standardized test and the brain has an ability to improve those circuits where neurons are being, uh, neurons are firing. So if you continuously, repeatedly do a certain process, you're gonna be getting better at those. But then people who have a higher IQ have an edge on these tests. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I think we, um, by asking that question, we have very well covered this slide as well. Uh, yeah, because the concept students nowadays, of um, one day I discussed with them about IQ and I got uh, very much interest from parents and students that they want to test their child's IQ, they want to check their IQ, whether he's compatible or not. So I, I want to bring a very clear picture in front of parents and students that IQ is not very important. If your child is not intelligent in, in anything, it, it's not the judging criteria. It can be one of the priority, but it's not the only priority. Exactly. So this is something even most of the neuropsychiatrists and uh, neuropsychologists agree as well. Uh, so 
we have uh, we have a we'll be taking a look at a uh, couple of popular people whose iq was somewhere around 70 and yet they excelled in their field mm-hmm. uh so what we call classically medically is we use the term idiot most commonly but i'm right. sure 80% of the people do not know the meaning of idiot mm-hmm. it is a very very scientific term uh, on stanford binet intelligence scale as you can see on the slide some mm-hmm. your uh, when your iq is less than 20 points that's where you call a person idiot and then we have a popular term called moron that is somewhere if you have an iq of 50 to 69 points you call and at this point you are not able to comprehend your logical tasks as simple as walking across a room uh, using mm-hmm. a washroom you even your daily tasks like eating your own food are uh, you not mm-hmm. able to comprehend such things and then we have something called borderline deficiency where a person can perform his life tasks his daily tasks but not very efficiently and okay. then comes the academic level of iq so this is where we categorize kids this is where we uh, standardly we put kids as dull average superior very superior genius and this happens in mostly in the math class so mm-hmm. we do not take language skills into consideration we do not take mm-hmm. art skills into consideration we say that if a person is weak in math he is a dull student by definition we call this in our lots of lots of educational institutions do this of course there are few who uh, take up a overall evaluation and uh, so there is something called average intelligence so if mm-hmm. you look at this is called bell's curve if you have a look at uh, this side of the slide it's yeah. called bell's curve and this this is called so because of the shape it has it looks like a bell most of the people in the world fall into the iq range of average 90 mm-hmm. to 110 and uh, we expect people to perform miracles in an average iq range i don't say it is not possible but it is not a very reasonable expectation okay. so then i think we have superior and very superior people and here i want to bring a topic of emotional quotient the more intelligent you are the more physical factors of life you are perceiving at every level in your life so the more you are uh, it, it's simple things like a large sound can bother you so much you couldn't even cope with a, you couldn't even write an exam even the, the topic you have mastered for all all the years you couldn't even do that because there's a small sound outside that is irritating you so much so nice. there are several factors that influence iq can we have the next slide sir yeah so um i want you to take a look and i would uh, like to classify these factors into two basic segments one is hereditary and uh, one is the capacity and performance so your capacity can be influenced largely up to 50% of variance in this capacity is found in the genetics and then the diet you eat this is something i practice during my exams what i do is when i have a hectic level of work i need to be doing about 14 to 15 hours of work every day for continuous one month or one and a half month time mm-hmm. i go into a vegetarian diet i okay. consume a lot of glucose based products uh mm-hmm. and i rely upon i take a lots of fruits and vegetables uh but usually if i'm if i'm in a chilling and relaxing mode i'll go with a lot of non veg and okay. that's where i'll be having my junk food and um, kind of these things and even your activity is a very important determinant of the capacity you have you might be the most intelligent person Mo, you you might have an iq of 160 to 140 and yet you could be sleeping all day in bed if you do not have a physical activity something to keep you active every day and sure. then you have hormones like so, a simple thing like thyroid um, can affect your capacity of intelligence you could be born with a huge capacity of iq and if you are have a, if you have a deficiency with thyroid uh that i could come down drastically even to a level that could um, in in we, we could classify a person into moron or imbecile level so that much effect hormones can have and again physical factors like obesity stress uh, obesity can be can affect your capacity of intelligence which is why ideally we say that a person should have a very very active lifestyle mm-hmm. uh and this should include all the elements like a, a good diet a good uh, social circle because that keeps you mentally it keeps you calm it keeps you sane and uh also a simple things like physical exercise pumps endorphins into your body they make you happy and you feel good by doing such things on a regular basis this is how you preserve your capacity but there's something called performance here so mm-hmm. your capacity and performance are totally two different elements and they are 
a standard intelligence test is uh, a person who is quite intelligent could do mm-hmm. bad in exam uh, this is a recorded evidence the persons who who have extraordinary ability with certain skills are yeah. have shown very bad skills in performance tests which right. is which would be a conventional annual exam of a school or a semester test in college or even a competitive exam we could talk about they, they could even factors like stress anxiety environment could be affecting the performance in a huge level um so i have a like, question here yes um, yes sure uh, parents and student face this a lot uh, this is very practical whenever exam comes we get anxious about uh, this i have to study i have to study that also okay i have to repeat that also i don't want food now i don't want to play now <laughs> i don't want that all active thing which i'm doing from last Three months and during exam, I I get an excess. This is happens with the students. Yes. Now parents they try to explain them, but sometimes they also lose their patience and they also become an excess with the students. Okay, he has not studied. Oh my God, how can I help him and all? How do we solve that? How do we come Sir. to a round zero where parent, student, and teacher all three community understands that being an excess at the last moment won't help you and it will lose your all. hard work which you have done from last 3 months Leave sir uh, this is uh, you have asked me a wonderful question sir in fact and i've been exi- I'm, i'm i'm quite excited to even answer this question yeah. uh, this is a, this is something i've been thinking for years now in fact what would be an optimal education system yeah. so if we take a look at uh, educational system rankings across the world we wouldn't be yeah. india as a country wouldn't be standing anywhere in the top 100 the first position comes to a country like finland and mm-hmm. uh, in the first ten we have another country like japan mm-hmm. and uh, they follow a system of a comprehensive assessment okay so you're not assessing a person on a single base single exam a single test while you're assessing his uh, attentiveness in class you're mm-hmm. atten- assessing his uh, questions even the students are graded there are certain universities that grade a student upon mm-hmm. the questions doubts he raises in a class mm-hmm. um and then there are like once let us say um there is a chapter called mechanics mm-hmm. and you talk about velocity today so mm-hmm. you talk about vectors today mm-hmm. immediately at the end of a concept there'll be a quiz Mm-hmm. right there in front in in their tabs or in their computers they using computers as a very active tool during the lectures nobody is sitting and taking the notes yeah. pen and paper of course there are certain benefits associated with noting uh, pen and paper notes uh, and there are there are other benefits as well to listening the class and comprehending the knowledge mm-hmm. so there are systems where uh, you answer the quiz right at the end of the test like a very simple questions that help you assess the success of the class and right. i believe it's also a lecturer's ability to convey a concept mm-hmm. so uh, we, what happens in most of the colleges is a professor come walks into the class with a pre prepared or downloaded ppt and uh, it's been presented and he's reading the slides up you could just circulate the ppt i can read myself right so we we, we teach the kids reading at a level 1 and level 2 classes so mm-hmm. kid can read himself that's not what we expect from a teacher you need to show examples you need to show them in a way you need to make them comprehend the concept that is sub an ideal teaching in an educational system True. so we have defects at every step here yeah uh, but i must share this uh, this this practice vishnu is being done in ib schools in india also and there are some cbse cbse schools which i have visited uh, in bangalore or chennai somewhere in mumbai and delhi they are practicing exactly what what Japan or Finland or America is doing today. So uh, yes, we can say our education system is not up to the mark, or we have a different varieties, and you know the, the vision of every school is different. One school's vision is to do well in extracurricular. One school's vision is to do good in academics. We don't share a common vision with schools among school industry also. I agree with that point, sir. And But I education bring- industry in India. since i have been a part of many schools community i have seen it's growing teachers principals and parents all these three communities are getting together and really working hard to work on all the areas for the students and i'm it, it can't be with 100% schools but yes most of them are really working with technologies one example is smart boards 
smart boards in last five years has covered all government and private schools. It's not only covered, students and parents, teachers have adapted digital education there. This is one of the example where we start about uh, modern education technology. Um, I agree with this point, sir, but I believe only you can, you can bring an optimal change that can affect mm -hmm. when evaluation process includes these things. So at right. the end of the day, you're testing his scientific ability, you're testing his language ability, and you're right. testing his memory in the exam. Nothing True. more than this. So why can't we have, if you take a look at Ivy Leagues, universities, they're mm -hmm. not looking at your grades, they're not looking at your percentages, they're not looking at your SAT scores. They're looking at your determination to do something, your passion, your goal. And mm -hmm. we as an education system are not, we have no evaluation scale to help you cope with such qualities in your life so yeah. in to get into our medical program in india all you need to is get a good rank in need that's all yeah. does yeah. he have a compassion to be a doctor we are not checking that but if you want to get into harvard medical school trust mm -hmm. me the intake of harvard is one is to ten uh, ten person uh, ten ratio while okay. uh, which means out of uh, 10 applicants one person is getting into harvard yeah. i think uh, yeah, out of 10 applicants, uh, sorry, out of 100 applicants, one person is one getting is into getting Harvard. Mm -hmm. But if we take a look at AIMS, it is 0.0001% intake. In we have more than uh, 10 lakh people writing, uh, writing an AIMS entrance uh, mm -hmm. for an 70 to 80 seats in the college. Mm -hmm. So with so much of competition, we have gone with the evaluation process that is purely based on a cognitive ability. Okay. And... Um, you're not testing the compassion. You're not testing the passion to be into that particular profession. You're mm -hmm. not testing his accounting skills. You're not asking, have you done your accounting? Have you, have you helped your family with economic planning? Do you understand taxes to, for a CA entrance? You, mm -hmm. you never asked the engineer if to get mm -hmm. into IIT. You never asked a person, have you ever built anything in your life? Mm -hmm. So but while you, you take a look at most universities in the world, like Ivy Leagues, they, they, take, they, they consider all these things as an evaluation criteria in their exam. True. So which is, which is what determines a wholesome development in a personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I would like to talk about determinants of intelligence. So they, they could be, so first of all, you need to understand intelligence and cognition. Uh, cognition is like an umbrella term under which intelligence is one among the determinant. And under intelligence, there are again a couple of factors where standard IQ testing is happening. One is reasoning skill, which AIMS entrance focuses a lot upon. They have something called assertion and reason segment, which mm -hmm. covers up to 20 marks in every segment. Um, mm -hmm. This is when I wrote my entrance. This has been a couple of years now. So I'm not sure if the pattern has changed. And then there is speed, which is a very integrative part of all the exams we have. Then memory. More, it's more upon how you memorize the formula. And then we have spatial tests. This is your three-dimensional visualization process. If you want to get into fields like architecture, your spatial tests are being tested to get in there. You have to draw a couple of things. They ask you, um, you're flying, uh, you are an eagle flying on um, gate of uh, India gate. Mm -hmm. And how do you think the visual is going to be? So mm -hmm. you're supposed to imagine your a spatial segment like that, an aerial view and then make an image of that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Then again, you have individual domain. So you, you, you want to check a mathematical ability, you can check, you want to check a calculus ability, you can check like that. So uh, this is what this is how the intelligence and cognition and standard testing patterns work. Um, can we have the next slide? So again, as I, as I told, cognition includes, cognition is a very big umbrella term. And that includes a couple of things like your attention, judgment, social cognition, executive functions, intelligence. But now we have taken a look at all the segments that are involved in intelligence. Now, um, I want you to answer a couple, uh, answer one thing for me, sir. Yeah, uh, can please. we have the next slide? Yeah, sure. I think we missed. Okay, uh, we'll get to this slide later, sir. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah, um, can you explain me how such a painting was made using the conventional intelligence parameters we have just checked. So let, before, we, before I ask you the, that question, I, let me point out a couple of things. The background of this, uh, this painting, Mona Lisa, has, mm -hmm. never been, has never existed. It's purely mm -hmm. imaginative. 
and okay. it's also said the person like this has never existed if you look mm. at this face there is a mm. uh, it is it is broad on the right side and yet mm-hmm. it is less on the other side mm-hmm. and they say that it's a uh, masculine on the left right of the painting and uh, left of the painting is feminine okay so da vinci favored a f- feminine side more and uh, so a person was also homosexual so there were mm-hmm. lots of attributes given to that uh, mm-hmm. that thought process of bringing masculine and feminine nature together in a single painting and then that posture was never ever drawn before da vinci mm-hmm. so most of the components of the painting are imaginative can okay. we explain ability such an ability with any of the intelligence scales we have discussed before sir see da vinci himself is a you know it's it's a kind of pattern or the it's it's a kind of law which you have to study it's vast for me as a person uh, personally i find very difficulties to understand a painting or a drawing it's it's very <laughs> difficult for me trust me sometimes i see some paintings just drop off colors there and they they imagine that okay this is there that is there for me it's just a few droplets and a black background and some camlin color used on the canvas i look it at that perspective so the way you have explained this painting nobody has explained me and i have gone through many blogs you can also go through it they have a different perspective to mona lisa's painting somebody says it's it's out of the quantum physics somebody says it's lot of triangle used to make make this painting we can't open da vinci's mind and come to the reality that what exactly was there in this painting so exactly uh, sir yeah, so, so you cannot my point here is you cannot trace an intell- intellectual process behind an artwork true so there is something beyond intelligence that is pushing towards the art can mm-hmm. we go to the previous slides yeah previous ones yes so we can take a look at a popular people here uh, first one is thomas alva edison the man who um, who is credited for his invention of bulb of course yeah. there is again a lot of controversy with nicolas tesla tesla's work in edison but mm-hmm. yet i'd like to point out he's a he's a scientist who did revolutionize today's world he was also uh, he had a very very smart business mind as well but mm. if you take his iq it falls in a very very normal range just like you and me or in fact even less than you and me uh, yeah. somewhere at 110 that's all richard feynman is a physicist in manhattan project which was the mm-hmm. f- code name for a first nuclear bomb ever developed mm-hmm. and uh, his iq falls under 125 which is not really high most of the people listening today's session would be having the same iq Right. and in fact would be having much more than this and uh, if we take a look at Ma- madam curie uh from the woman on- only person ever to win two nobel prizes in two different segments of science mm-hmm. her iq is somewhere between 180 to 200 which is much more than albert einstein himself but mm-hmm. she could she never thought of relativity she never thought how universe works her mm-hmm. work was confined to the radioactivity of a molecule Mm-hmm. and if we take a look at mohammad ali uh, his iq is just 78 mm-hmm. which is which which is something we classify uh, if we if we have to classify as psychiatrically uh, mm-hmm. this is something defective iq what we'd say below much, average must must much below average and even dull um, and uh, imbecile level iq is mm-hmm. what we would uh, not imbecile of course but we'd be calling it much less than that sure. and cristiano ronaldo is someone who is very near to average the average if we take average of 100 um he falls into that scale mm-hmm. um and yet he's he's one of the richest uh, sportsmen all the time and I'm very uh, fan following when students are a fan of ronaldo they're a big fan people love this guy and the way if you if you look at mohammad ali's boxing style mm-hmm. you could see a lot of cognition happening in there and yet none of the cognitive skills could bring it out so if imagine a situation where a person is trying to hit you and then mm-hmm. you you are you are defending in such a style uh which is which is borderline which is poetic in fact mm-hmm. so and the man's determination dedication is celebrated he's he's an inspiration to many sportsmen in different fields exactly. um of course he recently expired and then if we take a look at beethoven he has an iq of 160 which is equal to albert einstein but mm-hmm. he never thought of relativity either mm-hmm. he never thought how how to bring down quantum physics his mm-hmm. intelligence expressed in the music 
um, okay. there's some interesting point about Beethoven, which I'll be getting into light, um, later, later ahead. And mm -hmm. if you take a look at Michael Jackson, he had an IQ more than Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to point out a certain, certain things here. Just because you have low IQ, you have an average IQ, like mm -hmm. uh, Edison and Richard Feynman, does not mean you can't become a scientist. Just because you have a high IQ doesn't mean you crack the mysteries of universe. Right. And just because uh, you have a, a very low IQ doesn't mean you can enter into sports. So no. at this point, we are questioning the whole concept of intelligent quotient and why are we even measuring this scale? Mm -hmm. it, is, it is proving in all the eight scenarios I'm showing you on the screen here, it is proving inefficient. Sure. To that the reason we can conclude on this, like IQ, um, more than IQ skills set are important. Your interest is important, right, Vishnu? Exactly, sir. The so there, there, are, sir, there is there's something much more than IQ that mm -hmm. is pushing a person to achieve something in life. Right. And so, we don't yeah. even have to consider achievements like popularity, like a Nobel Prize, like a financial mm -hmm. uh, control here. You can, you can take an achievement as a simple thing, as simple as having a happy family. Mm -hmm. I think which is, a, which is a very big thing as well. Parenting is a very, very big skill. It's not right. easy to handle a child. And it's not easy upbringing a child as well. So, so, so things which we see as so simple, if done efficiently, can change the world. True. And can mean the world to another person. So we discussed this, right? So before yeah. uh, we go into this, um, I just want to bring out a point. So today the world is filled with robots all across. Mm -hmm. We have, we have robot companies using robots. We have robotic technology happening in our mobile devices. Uh, we have artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, a lot of work is being done with robots today. Mm -hmm. uh, we have chatbots happening around and almost you can say every instant in your life, you have an access to a robotic device, uh, including cleaning your house. And uh, the, the concept of robot did not come from a scientist. Can we have the next slide? Sir? It came from a person. Uh, it came from a chess writer. Uh, and robot is a chess word for word slave. Mm -hmm. And it came from one of his play where, uh, where he had mechanical men who were built for work on factory assembly and they revolt against their masters. Mm -hmm. So that's where the whole idea of robot came from. And Isaac Asimov have uh, used this term in, in a very interesting, fascinating, fascinating story. Even iBot movie is made upon one of his novels. Okay. And he, built the, he coined the term robotics from the word aeronautics. So just like how we have aeronautics, he said, okay, tomorrow we can have a field like robotics. Mm -hmm. So yesterday, someone approached Vishnu uh, from Bangalore a company, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a robotic company. So they told me that uh, nowadays we are developing a special kind of voice uh, sensor based robots. So you don't need to take session. What we can do is we can do a design a robot for you, a software which will take everyday session and handle your kids on your voice like you handle. So you have to do some exercise and some recognition in it. So I was just trying to convey why I'm <laughs> stating this here that um, Teaching you does not bother me. It's basically my passion to learn astronomy and to teach astronomy. So if I bring a robot instead of me, if I do my recordings in the class, that will replace me. So I lose my passion in that. Right? So robots, yeah. So the robot, when it started, as stated by Vishnu, it, it was something called slave for you, which can help you. But the help will re remove your pace and passion from you. That's not good. So at the level when you... Instead of singing, you start listening to the music. Instead of playing guitar, you have automatic guitars, intonations and all. That's not good. Yes, Vishnu. So uh, my whole idea to convey the concept of robot is that even before, even years ahead of such a product being existed, mm -hmm. people have thought of it. So this is beyond okay. logic because how the, the process, how logic works is very simple. You mm -hmm. have a memory, you have an experience, you build a logic mm -hmm. upon it. So there is fire, it is hot, don't touch it, it's hurting you. One this question, Vishnu, uh, sorry to interrupt. One yes, question sir. just just came into my mind. Can we check IQ of a robot also? Uh, 
uh, again, sir, IQ was built upon very standard tests. Mm-hmm. So we do test I- IQ of a robot, but in a very different way. So we test it like there are there are a couple of algorithm. You mm-hmm. see how efficiently it is processing. So if I test the IQ of Google, what it will be? What will be the number? So that, that's what, sir. Again, <laughs> so IQ is a very relative term. We cannot yeah. apply it for a software in a broad sense like how we are doing for human. Right. So it needs to be done for a specific ability. I mean, we have robots for a specific ability. So if, ML if I based, say, uh, ML exactly, based robots, yeah. and I think it will be very specific at the task you have given mm-hmm. it to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So suppose a robot is developed to sort green apples from red apples. Mm-hmm. It is going to be very efficient because that's how we build its IQ. Mm-hmm. Which is okay. how we can even build our systems. There are factory workers uh, mm-hmm. who know this sorting, and they can they can do it much faster than robots as well. Right. So that is where the factories refuse to purchase a robot unless the engineer builds or comes up with a technology that replaces and more improves the human uh, process. That in a hundred scale, in a hundreds of scales, uh, a factory wouldn't replace its human workers because they are efficient in doing the job as well. So we are training robot for one's purpose, or we are training even robots for multiple purposes. But uh, we, I, I think it is. uh it is foolish it's i wouldn't even call foolish it is um it does not make much sense to me to compare robots iq with human mm-hmm. because we need to be working together it it has a processing ability we have a perceptive ability right so like right now we can even say a tab is a kind of robot the laptop right. i'm using is a kind of robot and it and is we have got those uh, yeah alexa it's or uh, google exactly google. sir optimized by processes Mm-hmm. but i am the one who is perceiving life here i am the one navigating my life with the help of these technologies so again i'd like to talk about uh, supports of cognition this is where we we combine iq and cognition and mm-hmm. i say that cognition is being fueled by these elements mm-hmm. here so you have if you have will power you could achieve anything probably you could you could you will get your dedication you will get your persistence you will get your focus you will get your creativity you will get your finances if you have your will power there are people who have achieved these coming from a very 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 low economic backgrounds and uh, you will be surprised to even hear the stories we have we have so many so many so many such people mm-hmm. and if you have one quality like determ- determination um mm-hmm. so i want to bring attention to a person called chintakandi mallesham Yeah. he was a he was a man who was born in one of the villages of telangana mm-hmm. uh, from a community of weavers mm-hmm. so he saw his mother's shoulder being uh, shoulder bone so basically there's attachment called a glenoid cavity in your um, scapula and then your humerus is by, being attached to it okay so th- th- that's this something here are, it comes uh... no no here scapula no. Okay. this is the shoulder okay. and uh, your humerus is your hand bone attaching to it so okay. the, she uh, she does a lot of weaving work with hand and uh, her bone was being ruptured here and it is being degenerated because mm-hmm. too much of usage of the bone mm-hmm. so this man was very touched by this concept and he did not do a lot of formal education because of their economic status mm-hmm. he stopped his education at age of 6 mm-hmm. he couldn't even read english in fact okay. he only knew telugu and he just had something called what we can say a determination and persistence to help his mother he did not have any knowledge any engineering skill and he have he was the person to build a you know a very electronic and economic machine which helps the weaving community today and in fact which is revolutionizing the fashion industry in the country today so including traditional weavers into the modern fashion industry it is revolutionizing all the designs all across the world mm-hmm. uh and uh, so that's what i mean to say even without your knowledge even without your iq you could be getting to such a place and i want to point out to another person called arunacharam muruganatham the man on whom the padman movie was made by akshay kumar okay. yeah We so this him. so uh, it's a quite popular movie most of you even might have seen him and um this man was not again very educated the only thing which drove him towards developing an economic machine was his passion towards it was determination to make something for women that's all nothing more and okay. that that propelled him to international platforms today it revolutionized the whole menstrual hygiene industry 
and with that i can i can tell you reproductive health in our country is have have replenished like uh, you can't if you can't even imagine before that we had a hysterectomy incidents we you, you go to a hospital with a gynecological infection and uteruses were being removed at a, such a huge scale mm-hmm. and that has decreased significantly in the country today and you you cannot imagine i mean you couldn't think a man with no education no formal education have revenue would be contributing to so much of health in the country today oh. and to look at it it was it was more of a necessity he addressed the exact necessity in the people so you cannot use cognitive process or iq scale to define his work which is my point here so there's something next to that i, w- I would like to tell, next slide please so what i call is line of innovation so if you take a line of innovation this is how it happens before cognitive process on the left side and this is how the cognitive process is on the right side so it's a very simple thing cognition can be organized you have your assistants if you have an idea for research you can go to a scientist he's going to develop an optimized research methodology which will help you build a product and then it will help you build into a, a market and then economy finance you can make money out of the product what you build but how do you get that idea this is where the complexity is mm-hmm. you cannot say that there is one thing involving just like how i represented with multiple colors mm-hmm. uh, there, there are so many factors involving behind this and to for the cognitive process to run efficiently you need the supports just because you have an idea doesn't mean you will be successful you will be making a change in the world unless you, you work with the supports and of the cognition unless you work with dedication unless you work with a uh, strong sheer will power you couldn't be making a difference even though you have all the other elements in life okay. this is like a fuel for cognition that's what i would call next slide so uh i'd like to bring your attention to beethoven here uh you uh, many people might be familiar with the name but let me tell you he's a classical musician and most of the flip phone generation when we have used a motorola phone the ringtones default ringtones were beethoven symphonies he okay. composed eight symphonies and uh, he is known as a revolutionary person in the classical music and uh, there is a very interesting fact about him uh, he composed all his classics after 1800s by 1800s this man was 60% deaf within 2 years he was 100% deaf so all the information sensation process so this is how your thoughts are developed you have your information you have your emotion you have your thoughts which again go to idea and expression and all the information and sensations are totally cut off to him he couldn't hear the sound he is making yet he was able to process his, process his sound in such a way they are known mm-hmm. as the greatest musical works ever so even today his his works are being used as a collar tunes and mobile ringtone and yeah. even people who do not understand music kind of love listening to them so uh, let me also tell you what is uh, intelligent quotient and emotional quotient um do you identify this character dr sheldon cooper so he is a popular character from a very famous american comedy tv show called big bang theory <laughs> and um, again um, this he, this actor is one of the huge highly paid people in uh, usa and uh, um he himself is also homosexual i'm i'm referring to this point because we have a reference at the end why i'm uh, referring to homosexuality here so if you take a look i, I think kids might have seen this show as well we we, we have uh, kids or uh, one of few of your audience who have seen this show so he's a very intelligent scientist and at the end of the show he comes up with a concept called uh, asymmetry uh, in string theory and he wins a nobel prize and okay. uh during all the show you find it very comic that his communication skill his teamwork is very bad he's trying to optimize the process at every level but mm-hmm. he cannot he's 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 wait he's a person with very very high iq yet mm-hmm. his coping with daily life is so tough so mm-hmm. simple things like composure during a simple task is is a, is a very very big constraint for a person like sheldon cooper mm-hmm. so you you if you have a high iq you tend to have a very low emotional quotient mm-hmm. you couldn't be handling tough situations in life so in a way having a very optimal like you is a blessing no. because um trust me uh, people people with high iq suffer a lot 
yeah you can read about albert einstein you can read about isaac newton uh, tesla also you can read about you can read about stephen hawking they struggle in their daily life stuff they don't struggle in science they struggle in their daily life management managing people talking to the people maintaining relationships it's a big problem if you have higher iq yes sir and even something like um, they are more tend to have a obsessive compulsive disorder so mm-hmm. something like a bread okay. has to be cut in an exact angle because the okay. man can see the angle yeah probably yeah. i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't see the angle but he he does and he wants it to be perfect and he wants a perfect ratio of cheese in his sandwich so he's he's applying intelligence in every aspect of life mm-hmm. uh it's it's very tough to process the uh, a philosophical person came up with an analogy uh mm-hmm. like if you if you are using a knife mm-hmm. intelligence is very sharp tool if mm-hmm. you are using a knife to hammer a nail it doesn't work so sure. there's a, there's a specific way intelligence works but it is not everything if you have to cut something you need a knife mm-hmm. if you have to hammer something you need a hammer right so it, you need different tools in your life to go ahead and i believe one of such important tool is perception mm-hmm. and i believe this is where innovation happens so perception and not every perception you're perceiving normal things as well like sitting here i'm able to perceive your audio video of the session i'm able to perceive the light around me but this is not normal uh, this is not where innovation is happening the, but the place where you are not limited by your senses mm-hmm. so if you close your eyes especially the, the perception is a defining factor in the physics if you want to be successful in the world of physics and engineering this is a mm-hmm. very defining factor uh again i would i wouldn't say this is the most defining in the field of biology okay um because you can if you just close your eyes you should be able to visualize how life would be in another galaxy or mm-hmm. how gravity is working on a planet with a couple of uh, five or six moons around it mm-hmm. so this is something you cannot again that is a logical ability mm-hmm. so again you're fitting your logic into a three dimensional world so you need to be able to imagine vast amount of information or uh, and break all the physical laws you have so mm-hmm. let me tell you a few constraints of logical thinking so logic is uh, as i told you before it is a very very simple process of developing a logic simple thing like risk you once jump uh, jump from a certain position you fall down you break your leg you know it is going to hurt you and you're not going to want to do it again mm-hmm. this is not a, not a cognitive process this is a very innate ability even animals with a low cognitive process no understand these things mm-hmm. that if i don't eat food i'm going to die logic if uh, if i'm not able to um uh, quench my thirst i'm going to die mm-hmm. so simple things are developed from an existing memory and an experience and a logical certain certain logical abilities what we call instincts are even carried in the genetics which is what the hereditary factor in the uh, intelligence and iq mm-hmm. so the 50% there the, are the, the studies have gone through uh, in some of among the best publications that say 50% of the intelligence ability comes in the heredity okay and remaining has to be trained so uh if if parent himself is not um is somewhere in the iq of somewhere uh, around 100 to 1 to 110 it is not always possible to have for him to have a uh, son with an iq of 180 190 so yes, yeah. yes but there is a possibility i don't say mm-hmm. it can it can't be trained i don't say uh this is not possible there's a possibility and then any new innovation that is happening suppose any new discovery of physical law or quantum world mm-hmm. does cannot be bound by logic mm-hmm. okay. for that you need imagination so if someone tells you that you cannot fly by sitting mm-hmm. by logic is right is very right you cannot fly by sitting in in a position like how i am sitting uh, in my chair right now yeah. but if you are able to manipulate your gravitational force you can probably do that if you if you are a person who can manipulate gravity in a very different manner beyond the physical world you could possibly do that mm-hmm. so that opens that, that perception opens a new dimension of thinking and mm-hmm. your current physical laws our current logical world is built upon all the physical laws in the three dimensional world mm-hmm. the moment we think of fourth dimension it cannot comprehend to any of the existing logic we have mm-hmm. 
so this is not going to fit in i mean if you want to understand how singularity is working how event horizon is working you cannot use any of the knowledge of the current logic current physical law to determine mm-hmm. that because you okay. never know it's uh, this, this is where multiple dimensions involve mm-hmm. you can't okay. perceive time even though it is happening right around you mm-hmm. but your stomach can perceive time your brain cannot so you cannot sit at a place and say this has been 5 minutes i mm-hmm. open my eyes it has been 5 minutes no but your stomach knows this has been 4 hours you ate food you are hungry now mm-hmm. your okay. bladder knows this has been quite a time you need to go to the washroom now okay yeah so there are organs in your body that are perceiving time as a cyclical process but a human mind perceives time in a linear fashion mm-hmm. which is why uh, it is a very relative thing and then so i'd like to you talk about the previous slide please okay and then our current day technology is limited by the three dimensional world we have mm-hmm. so all the experimental physics you need to bring it into three dimensional world mm-hmm. and that is not how uh, astrophysics works you cannot probably comprehend a whole galaxy into a three dimensional world mm-hmm. because sure. they could be they could be phenomena beyond three dimensions what we understand happening around the stars right beyond so physical like dark laws, energy yeah. dark matter could play huge load, role and okay. as humans we are limited by our senses so you are limited by a visual spectrum which is why we have spectroscopes we have radio mm-hmm. telescopes so you right. can you can improve your senses but again we are looking only at the light there could be a sensation beyond light if we probably develop a certain new element in the brain you might mm-hmm. be able to perceive it you might be able to uh, tackle it in a whole different manner Mm-hmm. and sure. there are instances a person can uh, something called deja vu psychologically it is called a symptom but i would uh, slightly disagree i would say it is possible access towards the fourth dimension you are having okay and you could be perceiving some time in a very different in a different sense and you could probably your brain is somehow accessing a future element mm-hmm. which is why you see you feel like okay have, this happened before of course there's a different phenomena happening in disease but it could it could also not be um, a disease it could also not be a symptom it could be a different version of a uh, brain working okay so unless you break the conventional constraints of logic you cannot you cannot expand the level of your thinking and this is where if you, unless you break these conventional constraints you cannot go for out of the box thinking and you cannot mm-hmm. go for innovations happen so how do innovations happen next slide sir. so they happen beyond a conventional framework of logic and that is where we have something called state of mind mm-hmm. and uh, so just like a simple example if newton was probably hungry when he was sitting under the apple tree he would have ate the apple and slept mm-hmm. right. if he was not if he did not have a inspiration of kepler's laws of uh, planetary motion he would not have thought of gravity Mm-hmm. he would probably again he would have taken an apple and given it to a beautiful girl he found somewhere right so for innovation for to even though if you have if for to think beyond the conventional framework you need a right state of mind mm-hmm. a peaceful calm state of mind which is well fed well nutrition well nourished mm-hmm. and you should be able to cover your basic necessities of living like shelter food and these then you have a calm state of mind and you can efficiently work upon your inspirational idea true so and then that is where the innovations happen next slide so i want to bring a point because this is a month where month of gender awareness mm-hmm. uh first many people might be aware because of social media and lots of uh, awareness these days but let me bring it to our, our attention so there's something called lgbtq plus community uh l means lesbian g means gay b means bisexual t means trans and q means queer and there are there's a huge spectrum of these gender so gender is not just your physical identity mm-hmm. and the reason i'm bringing up is you have a specific segment in intelligence called masculine and feminine way of thought human brain has a uh, females are very dominant in management abilities okay. in certain skills like multitasking females do very better like uh, so there are business studies that say female ceos are much better than male uh, ceos in their organization decision making ability because mm-hmm. it is a biological instinct that gives them and men have a protective nature in their thinking they they're trying to protect what they have yet and they're trying to 
still uh, go for a, a taking a risk. A risk taking behavior is more in male. Okay. And imagine these both ideologies are being combined without a logical barrier, without a constraint of gender happening in the brain. So these people generally uh, cannot identify as two genders. Probably trans person who identifies himself as male and female could think in a very very different way, a perception which you and I cannot comprehend. Mm-hmm. So, which um, which is why I want to show you. I bring your attention to a person. This uh, to this person called Alan Turing. He is known as father of modern computing and mm-hmm. uh, a person who helped British, who was the first person to bring a reprogrammable computer into today's world. And um, his his work is why we have all the laptops and phones the way they are today. Mm-hmm. And he 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 was a homosexual who was punished for indecency by British government. Until 2014, when Queen uh, Queen of England have declared have apologized for the act, for the law they had, and uh, declared him as a war hero. Mm-hmm. And uh, this man have committed. He was put on a forced hormonal therapy to convert his gender, because of which he ate a poisoned apple and died. Which is the Apple logo what we have today. Apple uh, takes his logo from Alan Turing, um, in his. In the in that logo, oh, I had a different imagination for Steve Jobs Apple logo. So, <laughs> okay, okay. so that is the story, sir. It's an official story told okay. by uh, Steve Jobs himself. And the person next to uh, next in the photo is uh, Tim Cook. He's the current CEO of Apple, who okay. is also a homosexual. And uh, third person, I want to I want to bring from non scientific community. I mean, one scientist, one from management, and one from a comedy uh, community, Ellen DeGeneres. Um, mm-hmm. If you, if you look at her show, you can definitely feel relaxed. You feel much calmer than what you are. Mm-hmm. In fact, that is, that is something I see when I'm when I'm way too stressed to mm-hmm. relax myself. And uh, a very popular American uh, comedian, and she hosted Oscars twice. She mm-hmm. hosted Grammys three times. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the richest celebrities. I'll interrupt here. I have a question yes. now. Yes. Uh, what we find now among students, since students are listening, uh, so uh, what we find among students like. girls are very good in painting they are very good in artwork artistic thinking yes sir boys are very good in logical being uh, point to point or being some of them are introverts most of them are introverts and uh, we find very less boys interested into art world philosophical world and very less girls interested more into technology and science of it i'll give you a filtration or a ratio the questions which i get during the classes um, most of them are towards technology when it comes from a boy and it's more of them are towards general science or philosophical end or maybe artistic artistic end like why it's red why there is a red spot that that questions from girls why this happens sir there's a neuroanatomical evidence behind it okay our female brain structure is very different internally than what mm-hmm. the male male brain structure is mm mm-hmm. so uh because of which we can say that and again i i need to say i need to bring a point here uh to everyone's notice mm-hmm. that uh gender is something you identify yourself with masculinity mm-hmm. conventional idea of masculinity was like muscle power mm-hmm. okay because that is how you survive men yeah. have muscle so they bring food women cooks and yeah. raise children that was the initial concept of survival today that does not work if you say today's male that muscle power is everything uh that that's not that's yeah. not how our world works so today we are working on different level of skills which is where you need certain feminine abilities like mm-hmm. art or like these to mm-hmm. make a sane living in men and for females also they need to have a logical thinking ability but mm-hmm. if you look at the brain structure female brains are emotion dominant okay while male brains are intelligence logic dominant i wouldn't say intelligence i wouldn't call it intelligence it is mm-hmm. logic dominant so mm-hmm. you are apply logic it, it is very segmented and you organize thought process is found in male brain while mm-hmm. female brain uh, segmentation is less so interconnections are more mm-hmm. and uh, which is what i mean uh, if you ask a person and which is where the whole conflict comes in relationship between couples um Uh, when they're fighting or something like that so mm-hmm. the whole conflict comes there but i what i'm trying to convey here is put these two together and towards mm-hmm. something 
such a such a processing capacity such a different perceiving ability into a scientific thought into a innovative thought you yeah. have people like alan turing there mm -hmm. so in, i would say like yes anatomically we have these factors but they are convertible they are adaptable mm -hmm. so that's why i want to say understand how a woman is thinking understand how a kid is thinking understand how a boy is thinking so you get a different perspective in life you mm -hmm. get a different scientific perspective which is what going to be driving your life for whole time okay so here i want to talk about line of innovation that happens in reality so we have a mess uh, so this is what i call mess where the cognitive process is happening and mm -hmm. then you have an organized segment which is which is what you need to carry or carry it on forward but this is a very visual representation if you take it in a large scale you cannot distinguish this particular boundary happening anywhere so you have an idea you have a uh, you have a thought that breaks down into idea then you then you again have a mess of thoughts that breaks down into a objectives a specific determined objectives and then you work upon then again it becomes into a hypothesis then this hypothesis works into a research design then you understand none of this is going to work and you need a whole new idea <laughs> that's happened yeah so then uh, that is that is uh, how a cycle of innovation happens exactly, so by yeah. saying this uh, i want to put a take out a star trek reference here that mm -hmm. uh, unless you need a logical and instinctive brain to perceive things and you mm -hmm. need even emotional factors to analyze so there are much more things beyond innovations happening and uh, beyond normal world existing so by mm -hmm. by saying this i want to say live long and prosper <laughs> thank, <laughs> and you. thank you thank you vishnu for joining i would like to introduce vishnu once again those who joined uh, in mid of the session or later part of the session vishnu is uh, MBBS and uh, he has been part of ten research presentations. He is also uh, ACN representative for medical student conference. If I am right, Vishnu. Uh, I, I was a re national representative. Yes, sir. Yeah, you are a repre uh, national representative, and he is also co-founder of a community which works on Bleed with Pride working and reproductive. Uh, my health. organization name is Bleed with Pride, sir. We work okay. upon reproductive health. okay that's too good uh, he has been awarded with tarun mitra award uh, 2020 yeah vishnu uh, since you are a doctor a last question when this yes, corona virus is going to end when i come <laughs> out of my house yeah i don't believe it's going to be ending any time soon sir we'll learn to we'll learn to adapt to live with it so okay. the recent study says that your uh, immunity so most of the people who are being affected with corona virus are asymptomatic which means your immunity is working against it and mm -hmm. uh, your body is learning to handle it so mm -hmm. maybe uh, we can if we come up with a vaccine you could probably get out of the house and uh, live a safe life but before that you need to you need to follow your social distancing you need to uh, sanitize your hands regularly you need to keep your aerosol mode aerosol is the mode of contact mode of spread for mm -hmm. infection so if you are sneezing or something please keep the hand like this position mm -hmm. because this point point is not in contact with anyone Mm -hmm. this point okay. portion of the hand is not in contact with anyone and if you are going to some places please uh, where you have to touch uh, products which are being touched by every other people use a plastic gloves or something like that mm -hmm. and uh, yes or if you could if you can have a replay reusable gloves kind of thing that you can come back to home and wash please carry them with you to have an eco conscious and uh, un unless and uh, until we follow that we cannot survive for the end for the vaccine to come out of corona virus thank you vishnu thank you for joining us and thank, thank you, you to all the pleasure. students who have joined us um we are trying to bring some scientific information close to you beyond the classroom education what we are doing thank you so much everyone thank you take care thank bye, you, bye. stay safe thank you vishnu thank you sir will we be taking any questions sir uh no we are done okay sir thank you